everyone and welcome to the Waffle Flower channel. It's Shannon here and today I'm going to be demonstrating reactivating stamped ink. I've got a panel of watercolor paper there that you see. I cut that paper down to 5 by 7 I used the new lacy layer 5 by 7 dies to cut that panel. So it has a beautiful little stitch edge around it, which is just so awesome to have dies for 5 by 7 cards because I make big cards. So it's so nice to have a set that I can use with my for my big cards. So I have the Enveloper Kindness stamp set there. I pulled off the bear. I'm going to be using this stamp set exclusively today and I'm just right now just sizing it up and making sure I have enough room for when I stamp the additional floral stamp that came with the set. I'm using my Misty today. It's kind of a necessity for this technique. Um, for a couple reasons. One, that it's um, we're using watercolor paper, so you often with watercolor paper you have to stamp multiple times because of the texture. And um, and I'm going to be uh, stamping different colors. So we'll be stamping this bare image several times. I'm going to start, I'm using Distressed Ink today, and I'm starting with these four, well I'm going to use only these four. These four, um, Distressed Inks, Mustard Seed, Spiced Marmalade, Picked Raspberry, and Peacock Feathers, they all come together in a set, so and they work very well together. I'm starting with my lightest color, which is Mustard Seed, and I'm inking up prim most, most of the bear, some of the butterfly, and a couple of the flowers. And again, because this is, um, this paper is textured, it's, I'm going to be stamping this, inking this up and stamping this bear in this mustard seed a couple of times just so I can get a clean line and get a lot of that ink onto the paper. And once I'm done with this mustard seed, I'm going to move on to Spice Marmalade. So I chose, I was very careful and mindful when I picked these colors that I'm using today because I, I am going to be these colors are going to overlap and mix and I wanted to make sure that when my colors were mixing or overlapping I wasn't creating a lot of brown or dark colors, natu uh, natural colors. I wanted this to still be kind of a bright card. I want a bright vivid card so um, I know a lot of these colors work well together. So now the spiced uh, marmalade I'm just inking up different portions of the bear, the upper portion of the bear some of the tips of the flowers and some of the butterfly and again I'm doing this a couple of times I'm inking this up and stamping it a couple of times I'm inking it up in the same places that I did before which is easy to tell because that the ink kind of leaves like a residue so you can kind of see where you were you inked it up with your orange color and I'm cleaning this up but like I was saying these colors work really well together they mix together really nicely um, the only one I found that I didn't like how the um, picked raspberry, which is what I'm using right now, mixed with the um, yellow. So I'm tr avoiding putting that pink raspberry um, on top of the yellow. So that's that's the only c two color inks here that I just did not like together, on one on top of the other. So I'm being careful of that. And I'm only doing a little bit of that picked raspberry on one flower. Now I'm moving on to the last color in my four inks. Peacock Feathers. Now Peacock Feathers is a really fun color. It's like a teal and on top of the yellow it makes like a bright green, a grass green and on top of the um, picked raspberry it makes like a purple. So teal, this um, color works really well with these inks. So I had fun with that one. Again that one doesn't do so well. Uh, Peacock Feathers doesn't work so well with Spice Marmalade but I'm avoiding that too, mixing the orange and the teal together. So the, my best advice for this technique is that if you're going to use multiple colors like I'm doing right now, just be very, um, think about how colors mix together, you know how um, yellow and blue make green, You just think back to grade school how your colors mix together and know your inks, know how your colors how your inks play with one another if you're going to be overlapping. You can also do this technique, simplify it and just do one color which I did do, um, I have a card for and I'll, sh I'll link it to in the, um, in the description where I just did blue. That's all I did, one ink, just blue and did this same technique. So I finished 
stamping my bear. Now I'm making a mask real quick. That's what I'm doing. So that's why I had that memento tuxedo black. I'm just going to stamp this bear onto a piece of post-it note, which you see right there. And then I will cut it down. I'm going to, I want this um, floral uh, border to be continuous. So I'm going to cut uh, just one side of that bear. I don't need to trim out. I don't need to fussy cut that whole stamped image. And once I'm done fussy cutting it, I'll stick it down and I will pull off that second floral image from the set and start working on that. So almost done there. Just kind of cutting out that last little bit. And I did make a mistake here. I should have um, just cut, just made a uh, mask for the whole bear. But at this time, I was still figuring out the design. And you'll, I'll show you my mistake later. You'll see it. I'll, I end up eventually making a second mask that masks off the right portion of the bear instead of just the left. So I'm taping down. I tape. In addition to doing my um, uh, magnets, I did also tape down my panel here. Um, just as insurance, I, since I'm stamping this multiple times, that's just many opportunities for your, your panel to um, move on you. So I just taped it down as extra insurance. I don't want that panel to move on me and then I have like my image be off set. So I'm being really mind careful not for that panel to move. Okay, so I'm doing the exact same steps again. I'm start I started with mustard seed and I know I sped this up really fast because this is pretty much exactly what I did before just um, on a different stamp. I picked out portions to do the mustard seed and then I picked out portions to do the spice marmalade, a little bit of the picked raspberry and then my last color which I seem to do the most of is the pick the peacock feathers and that's mostly because it's it there's a lot of green in these stamps so um, a lot of greenery so I end up doing a lot of that plus it mixes well with the uh, mustard seed and the picked raspberry so it's a good color so I'm really liking how these colors like I've got so much color going on I really love all this color and now as you can see I, I ended up having to make another mask because I didn't do the right side of the bear, which I need to because I want, again, I want a continuous border. So I'm doing the exact same thing with that, this, um, that floral stamp again, just on the other side of the bear. Starting, I'm doing more picked raspberry this time. And then um, that peacock feathers, just a little bit more. And as soon as I'm done stamping, I get to the fun part, which is the water coloring or reactivating the ink. Doing a little bit of yellow there just because I want some more green. I don't want it to be just that teal color because that, that mustard seed over the um, peacock feathers makes green. So there you can see all my stamping is done except for all the border is done. Now I just have to, I just want to do a butterfly real quick. So I've just pulled off the butterfly from the set and a little like flourish. The flying flourish, I don't know what you call that. And I'm doing the um, mustard seed, spice marmalade, and picked raspberry just on the butterfly. Okay, so now I've got a very fine brush here and just water. It's to the side there, just in a little cup. And all I'm doing is, with my brush and water, I'm reactivating that distressed ink that I stamped the image with. And I'm kind of creating a shadow or a gradation around the bear so he looks a little bit more three-dimensional and around his nose here just to make it pop and it's a little bit hard to see here I think because the contrast is so with that back black um, mat behind the um, panel it's kind of hard to see but when when it's all done you'll really see the um, the dimension that this adds and it's it's beautiful on its own without doing this uh, without reactivating the ink and watercoloring but this just I feel like knocks it up a bit it kind of makes your um, your your image look like you watercolored it or you, it's just hard to tell what you did like it's one of those fun ones where people go gosh what did they do on that card I don't understand and almost looks like a watercolored image I had, when I'm painting this though, I'm thinking of, um, so I'm also 
real quick, <laughs> I'm also going, not just painting in wetting the image, but I'm also kind of um, creating like a halo or a, like a in the background, in the white space, in the negative spaces between the leaves and the flowers. I'm just kind of t pulling that ink over into those negative spaces too, just to make it more solid. Um, I want this to have some more depth and that will help it have to have like, almost creates like an atmosphere or a background. So, and you can see here where I'm going around the leaves and I'm creating like a halo around them. It just adds some more um, depth to the image. And it's really easy to do. This is the fun part. The stamping is a bit time consuming, but the, um, the watercoloring goes really fast and it's a lot of fun. And when I'm doing this, I'm thinking of those, I don't know, when I was a kid, they had these, um, these paint, these color books that you would just like, and they had like ink on the, um, images and then you would take a brush and then you would like, um, color and activate the ink and it was just like so fun and I was just surprised how much when I was doing this how much it reminded me of those coloring books when I was a kid so it's like creating your own coloring book but it's just I think it just was really pretty I, I really like this card I really like all the colors I really had a fun time making this card and see I'm almost done I only have a little bit more to do that the the last bit of this right side of the flower or, or the border and then I have the butterfly and that's it. So admittedly, the stamping can take some time because you're doing, because I was doing multiple colors is why it took so long. If you do just one color, like I did with my blue card, which I will show you and I will link to in the description, um, it goes a lot faster if you just do one color. So there it is. See how much depth add, added just by um, loosely watercoloring those images? Okay, so I stamped um, and in white embossed a strip of black paper with the a sentiment from that envelope or kindness stamp set and now I just have a piece of craft foam and I'm just adding it to the back with a glue stick it's just a glue stick I like glue stick still but I'm, I'm willing to try some more um, some other kind of adhesives but I just like that they always work for me <laughs> And I'm sticking it on and that is done. That's my card. So if you would like any more product info, please visit waffleflower.com and you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks for watching.